let's go ahead and start with a quick review. We'll start with two points, we'll draw a line through them, and we'll go ahead and examine the slope. Let's take a moment and identify x sub 1, y sub 1, and x sub 2, y sub 2. As we move from left to right, the first point we'll see will be the sub 1s, and the second point we see will be the sub 2s. We learned yesterday that the slope of a line is equal to that constant rate of change. So let's write constant rate of change. Okay. Now, symbolically, that is written as the change in the y's compared to the change in the x values. And we symbolize that, we shorten it by using this little triangle, which is a Greek letter, delta, and in math it means the change in. So it's the change in the y coordinates compared to the change in the x coordinates. Now, mathematically, the way we figure out those changes is by taking the later y value and subtracting the earlier y value from it. And thus we end up with this y sub 2 minus y sub 1 <coughs> over x sub 2 minus x sub 1. So there's a very quick symbolic review. And they are A and B. Okay? This is a horizontal line. So horizontal will be our, our first special case. Now, let's go back and take a look here. Hmm. The change in y is also sometimes referred to as the rise, right? The change in y, your vertical motion. So let's see here. We also mentioned yesterday rise over, oh, for heaven's sake, and I'll have to edit that out. Rise over run. Okay, this is kind of a, a slang, if you will, for, for these formal symbols, the rise over the run. Just got to remember that rise can be a downward rise, so to speak, as well, if that's possible. All right, now, from A to B, how much rise is there? Zero. Right. We're going to, in, in a horizontal application, between any two points, there will be zero rise, and between any two points, there will be some amount of run, right? You will have some horizontal motion between the two points, so I'm going to say that would be some x, some amount, okay? Now, if you take zero and divide it by any number, you will always get zero, right? Okay. So, it is possible to have a line that has a slope of zero. And sometimes that's referred to as a flat line. You know, if your graph flat lines, you're dead, you know, because the little beams aren't going up and down anymore. And what that means is there is a slope of zero. Maybe vertical line, and once again, we'll put two points on it. We'll put C and D. Okay? And we're going to go ahead and write vertical. All right, once again, let's compare the amount of rise to the amount of run on a vertical line between two points. All right, now, if I pick two distinct points on any vertical line, will there be rise between them? Yes. Okay. So we'll put the x up here. There will be some amount of vertical change. Now, two points on a vertical line, will there be run? No. And so in this particular special case, the zero goes in the bottom. Now, what do we know? We've talked about this before. If you take any number in the world and try and divide it by zero, what happens on your calculator? Right. You're going to get a divide by zero error. So let's put this down here. Divide by zero error. All right, <clears throat> so this creates problems. I mean, this created problems even before calculators were invented. 
And so the math community has agreed, and we all universally, no matter what country we're from, we all agree that on vertical lines we are going to say the slope is undefined. Exercise 1. Graph the line that passes through the point negative 6 comma negative 2 and has a slope of 2 over 5. They've given us a starting point. So let's go over to negative 6 and then down 2. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 and down 2, which is going to be right there. Now, from that starting point, we need to apply a slope of two-fifths. Now remember, slope is rise over run, or your vertical change compared to your horizontal change. So that means from the starting point, we're going to go up two and then over <coughs> two to the right, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now the beauty of this is, slope is defined as a constant rate of change. So I can get all the other points on this line by just going up two over five, up two over five, up two over five. All right? So up two, one, two, three, four, five. Up two, one, two, three, four, five. The thing that's kind of cool is going down two and to the left five will work as well because a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So watch. If I go down two, and then one, two, three, four, five, by George, by Jingo, that point would be on this line as well. Okay, you see? It's really kind of magical how it works. So go ahead and take some edge of your book or fold a piece of paper in half, put yourself a little straight edge. And since you guys are using graph paper, every single one of those points will fall on the line. Because slope, by definition, is a constant rate of change. Exercise 2. Graph the line through the point 4, 3 with an undefined slope. 3. So, 1, 2, 3, 4, and then up 3, 1, 2, 3. So, 4, 3 will be right there. And if it's got an undefined slope, it's vertical. So you just draw in the vertical line that passes through 4, 3. Exercise number 3. Draw the line that passes through negative 5, 5 and has a slope of 0. So we'll go over here to negative 5, negative 5 and then up 5. All right, so that will be our starting point. If it has a zero slope, that means it's flat line. It's a horizontal line that passes through this point. So it's going to look. All right, there you have it.